Now, as you've probably already heard from a couple dozen other channels out there, and yeah, here I am jumping on the bandwagon, but I do hope to bring something new to the discussion, Rotten Tomatoes has disabled comments and audience ratings for upcoming movies in the wake of the review bombing, as some call it, though they're technically not reviews, that has been plaguing Captain Marvel on their site. And last I heard, anyway, the want-to-see rating for the movie had dropped down to something like 29%, and I guess the reason Rotten Tomatoes has given for doing this, for removing this feature, is that, and I quote, we're doing it to more accurately and authentically represent the voice of fans while protecting our data and public forums from bad actors. There was an uptick in non-constructive input, sometimes bordering on trolling, which we believe is a disservice to our general readership. They also went on to say that once the movie comes out, reviews will be up and allowed as usual. Anyway, there are really a lot of different ways to look at this, and I'll try to be as fair and as logical as I possibly can here, so please hear me out, even if I start to say something you disagree with. Because, well, one of the things to take away from all this is that people nowadays really don't want to have to deal with or listen to those who have a different opinion than them. We've gotten to the point where if someone starts to say something we don't like, we just try and shut them down, and or look for someone who will say what we want to hear and reaffirm our beliefs, which, obviously, is very dangerous. It's dangerous to close your mind to other views, even if you never will or could agree with them, because it inhibits your ability to learn and grow as a person, and to be able to understand and be empathetic towards others. And worse yet, the more you try and ignore or silence people, the louder and oftentimes angrier they'll get, especially when you just dismiss their ideas or beliefs out of hand, or claim some type of unproven moral superiority over them, or just label them as haters or even worse. Which, of course, is pretty much what's going on in the Star Wars fandom right now, which is very concerning to me, and one of the main reasons I'm weighing in on this topic, in a hopefully civilized and constructive manner. Because right now you have fans who haven't been enjoying Disney Star Wars, or maybe don't like one particular movie, and they're voicing their disapproval. Only to get met with people on the other side telling them anything from Star Wars is changing and they need to deal with it, or that the real reason they don't like it now is because they can't stand that there's a strong female lead or any number of other claims that are both wrong and tend to provoke a response. Because, surprise, surprise, people don't like to have their views misinterpreted or have their arguments construed to make them out to look like bad or ignorant people. So what do they do in response then? Well, they act like humans and try to defend themselves and their position and continue to make their argument, which tends to get them called even worse things by the other side, which makes them take an even more aggressive stance and get harsher with their words. Which, in the eyes of the other side then, is all the proof they need that the haters have been nothing but haters all along, and gives them all the more reason to just write them off and ignore their arguments. And they never bother to look in the mirror and ask themselves if, just maybe, their inability to even listen and consider the other side might have played a part in the escalation of the problem, since the only thing that other side, the one called the haters, really want is to just be heard and acknowledged. And don't get me wrong here, because yeah, there certainly are those who angrily and irrationally attack Disney Star Wars and do it only in a truly hateful manner and didn't need much of any provocation to do it in the first place. Just like there are people who do love all things Disney Star Wars that can and do acknowledge people don't like the movies and they're okay with that and they can have a civilized discussion. In other words, there is a two-way street here. And by now you might be wondering, what does any of this have to do with Rotten Tomatoes and them changing one of their features? Which, don't get me wrong, they certainly have every right to do. Well, the real problem here is that this is likely only going to be seen as another attack against, or maybe a victory by since they got a response, those who do not want movies within the franchises they love and have loved for years to be used as propaganda by people with very one-sided political or social agendas. Basically, it's only going to make things worse. And to be clear, yes, I am one of those people who doesn't think a franchise like the MCU or Star Wars has a responsibility or should prioritize sending real-world messages in movies about superheroes or Jedi with incredible out-of-this-world powers, movies that are overtly fictional or fanciful in nature, movies that a great many people actually go to in order to escape from the problems of the real world. And to be honest here, I don't know exactly how much in movies these days is an actual agenda, or just gets perceived that way because we've been conditioned to look for it now, if you will. Anyway, perceived or real, though let's be honest, there is some of it in some movies, like it or not. The reason why these franchises, who seem to be embracing this, may ultimately suffer if they continue this trend, and why fans will revolt against them, is not necessarily because they're against the message, but because being force-fed messages that they already agree with is not why they go to these types of movies in the first place. 
And this is what fierce advocates of inserting these messages in movies can't or don't want to believe or understand. There is a huge difference between being opposed to something and not wanting to actively or monetarily go out there and support it. People aren't passing on seeing Captain Marvel because it's apparently going to promote strong female characters. They're passing on it because they don't want to pay their hard-earned money to see a movie that makes a point they feel doesn't need to be made in a superhero movie of all things. Because any good, rational person in today's world already agrees that all people should have equal rights and can be strong no matter what race or gender they are. They don't want to pay to see a movie that's telling them something they already believe. And if they're not rational people and don't believe in equality for all, then Captain Marvel isn't going to change their mind. And if any young girl or boy needs a movie like Captain Marvel to tell them they have worth, then those within their life, and society as a whole, is truly failing them. And I don't think we're taking the problem seriously if we're leaving it up to a movie to begin to fix the issue. And what people are actually upset about is not superhero movies with female leads. It's that entertainment is becoming the new political and social battleground. The place people go to for a reprieve from all of that has become the new front of the culture war. And that is why people are willing to go to Rotten Tomatoes and review bomb a movie like Captain Marvel, not out of hate, but as their own form of activism about what they see happening in the film industry. And, as you may know, Brie Larson, who of course plays Captain Marvel, has come out and said that the movie is her form of activism. So, why can't people counter with their own voice and be heard as well? And look, I don't support people who get irrationally angry, but I do support their right to do so. Because it's scary when people get silenced for saying things that are deemed hateful or unacceptable, because who exactly gets to decide the definition of those things? Who gets to say what's hate and what's just criticism? Even here on YouTube, there's talk about removing the thumbs down or downvote button because, as they see it, it can be used as a form of weaponized hate when people downvote something in mass. And instead of asking if there's a reason why people are doing that, why people in huge groups are against something, well, we'll just remove their ability to be critical instead of getting to the bottom of the matter. And as someone who is a content creator here on YouTube, I am completely against them removing the downvote button. Why? Well, because it helps me gauge the reaction to my videos. It helps me understand what people like or don't like, beyond just how many thumbs up a video may get, which oftentimes doesn't tell the whole story. Because I've had plenty of videos that get a ton of thumbs up, but they also get a ton of thumbs down, relatively speaking, which lets me know people had a very strong view or opinion both ways on a video. And not to veer off course here, but in theory, the concept behind the internet is a truly great one. It's a place where anyone and everyone can go to interact with others and share their views or stories. And as I've said before, the best part about the internet is that it allows everyone to share their opinion. And the worst part about the internet is that it allows everyone to share their opinion. Because instead of using the internet to look for facts and uncover the actual truth, we tend to use it to seek out others who will just tell us exactly what we want to hear. And like I said, it's dangerous, no matter what you believe, when you close your mind to all other possibilities and surround yourself with people who only want to comfort you and reinforce your beliefs instead of challenge you in any way. And before I get any more off topic here, I'm just going to wrap this up and say that Rotten Tomatoes can do whatever they want with their site. And I understand if they don't want their platform used to just hate on a movie before it even comes out. That's really not the point of what they're trying to do. However... It does say something when so many are willing to rally around something and go on the attack, if you will. And to ignore it doesn't make the issue they have go away. It only reinforces their resolve to come back. Well, that's all I've got for this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think about anything or everything I had to say in this video. And until next time, thanks for watching.